What is happening? My name is Nathan. This is your glasses. So I get the S5 Max versus the Roblox S6. Actually, I did a video on that. Now, we're going to do these guys versus the Personic M7 Pro. So what's so great about the Personic M7 Pro? Well, this is the first lighter based robot vacuum that has a self empty bin. But one thing to know is D-Bot R98 was the very first one technically, but this is the most modern one. Alright, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. If you look at these well, vacuums, they all have this like hump. This is where the LiDAR based navigation system houses. It helps protect that spinning laser. These are all mechanical based systems, which means they require a motor to spin these 360 degree lasers, which is a great feature. Now, for the S6 and the Procinic M7 Pro, it's actually a pressure sensor system. You hear that? That's actually a physical bump sensor, so if there's no hanging furniture, help prevent the robot from hitting its head or knobby thing. Now, of course, it's not on the S5 Max. Now, both the S5 Max and the Procinic M7 Pro have a very basic front layout. Give you guys a close look there. Alright, so I like the clean look of the S5 Max. You can see you have a home button and you got your clean button. Now, one nice thing is if you hold down the clean button for three seconds, it goes into spot clean mode. Very nice feature, Roblox. Very similar, it has that clean look, just a two button system, a home button and clean button. Unfortunately, there's no spot clean button. You have to enable that through the app and you cannot enable all that through the robot. Alright, next thing is let's look at the dustbins here. If you turn these guys around, the dustbins are top loading. You just open up the lids here and you can see the dustbins. I did a comparison between the S5 Max and S6, so definitely check out that video if you want to know the differences. Check out my uh, S6 versus S5 Max if you want to know the differences between these two. And here's the test fit on the Procedic M7 Pro. You can see that this dustbin is very large. Here's a size comparison between the two dustbins. Very nice. On the Procentic M7 Pro, it's around 600 milliliters, and on this, it's around 410, I believe, milliliters. So, definitely larger on the M6 Pro. And it even has that self emptying bin. Alright, so all three robots have a, a little cleaning tool, which you can store on the robot. So, for the Roblox, you just store it right near the dustbin. Very nice. Now, you're wondering where in the world is the cleaning tool on the Procentic? Hold on, let me show you. So on the M7, you actually have the storage tool right here. You just kind of pull it out like a credit card, and there you go. Very cool. And it actually looks exactly like the... Here's the two uh, cleaning tools. You notice they both have the cleaning edge up top to help snip the hair and your little bristles down at the bottom to help clean the robot off. I like that feature. Alright, so next we're going to look at the daycare wall sensors. All three robot vacuums have it. Notice on the S6, they're vertically mounted, same as the M7. But for the S5 Max, it's more of a horizontal mounting system. This is actually a little bit better. It does a better job keeping away from the walls, especially if you have like these pillars type stuff. Okay, so on the left side, both the Roblox series, there's nothing on there. It's very plain. But for the M7, they wanted to keep it kind of even or balanced. There's another wall sensor. But I looked closer. It actually isn't a wall sensor. Actually, it's just a dummy sensor. Just kind of looks there for a nice, clean, even design. Have a look underneath the robots. All three robots have a uh, side brush system. I like the M7 system where it's a dual side brush. One thing to notice is these guys spin pretty fast, so unfortunately they scatter debris around. So it's best to have this guy run twice. You also got the wheel caster on all three robots, plus charging contacts. So you may notice some additional charging contacts in the back. This is actually a sensing pin, so when the robot docks on this side or from the wheel, it does the self emptying feature. But the robot actually charges in the front. Very unique system. It's a two-way system. You may notice that on the S5 Max, there's only four clip sensors, whereas this guy, there's six. And on the M7 Pro, there's four sensors as well. All right, let's go ahead and open up the extractor housing. Okay, here's a quick look at the extractor bars. They're actually the, almost the same length, minus the shafts being a little bit longer on the Roblox. Now, one thing to know is the end caps actually can remove to help remove the hair, just kind of twist on them and they pop off and you get this hair out. Very nice feature. They both have a combo style of bristles and silicone. Now on the Roblox, the bristles are denser, there's a lot more of them. So both these robots do well picking up hair, but they do get tangled around the extractor bars. 
especially on the ends and also in the middle there. So keep in mind when you have a lot of pet hair. Maybe clean these brushes a lot. Okay, let's have a quick look at the apps on both these rollout vacuums. Then we'll do a navigation test, we'll do pickup charges. We'll also do some of the unique features that both these guys offer. Alright, let's go ahead and grab a smartphone. I tried it on both the Galaxy Note 9 on Android, also on the iPhone 8 Plus, and they both worked well. I have heard that some users were experiencing crashes on the Persinic M7, but that wasn't the case in my experience. Alright, if you look at the home screen, you actually see the Mi Home app. You can see the design versus the Persinic Home. I actually prefer the Mi Home app. It looks a little bit cleaner design. So once you launch into the app, you'll be greeted with uh, the robots. I own two Roblox, the S5 Max and the S6, whereas I only own one on the Prosimic M7. So let's go ahead and jump into the S5 Max. Robots agree with a nice clean interface. They both show the maps. They both have area select and they also have room select as well. You notice the different colors on the map. This represents the different rooms. You also have the ability to do area select. Now, both robots have the ability to save maps. Uh, you can also edit the maps. You can do keep out zones, no go zones, and they also offer the very same design where you can draw boxes. For the robot, you can do both boxes and lines as well. Now all three robots have a different power settings. For the S5 Max, you actually can control the wire level because this is an electronically controlled mopping pad. For the Roblox S6 and M7, these are gravity fed systems, but one nice thing on the Roblox is you actually have a mechanical switch that allows you to control the water settings. Besides being able to edit your map, name the rooms, and do areas, select your keep out zones, you also have a lot of settings. On the Roblox, there's more settings. You have a lot of different things. You can do maintenance. But all three robots have a pin and go feature. So what that does is you drop a pin on the map and the robot will drive to that area. So for the Roblox, you have the ability to do a spot clean. The M7 is automatic, so once it gets to that area, it will automatically do a spot clean function and then return to Alright, so another feature is all three robots have a remote control feature, which you can use on the smartphone. The M7 takes a step further by offering a handheld remote. You also have the ability to control the robot using cellular or a different Wi-Fi network. Unfortunately for the Roblox, they removed that feature, so you have to be on the same Wi-Fi network for the remote control feature to work. But I do like the virtual joystick. I find that it's a little bit easier to control, just trying to draw this around. Very nice Starting feature. Remote control. Remote control start. And on the Roblox, once you get to the desired location, you can do a spot clean. You can also tell it to clean the entire area, or you can just dock. All the robots have a maintenance history, so they log how long you've been using all the consumable items, like the filters, the side brush. Also, when you should wipe down the robot, that's very important. Make sure you keep your clip sensors clean and all the other sensors so the robot doesn't fail in the future. Okay, so that's just a brief look at the settings. I will do an in-depth review on all these guys, like app integration and control. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, check out the navigation of these robots. We'll also check out the cleaning ability and the additional features. Both the Roblox and the M7 have the ability to be physically moved to a new location within the map and go back to the home station. Uh, this is an example of how well the robots navigate. This is the Roblox S6 versus the M7. The S6 is slightly faster than the S5 Max, so I wanted to use the S6 as an example. So as the time of filming, the S6 is the best robot vacuum in terms of navigation. It's the quickest of any of my robot vacuums I've reviewed on this channel. I've reviewed the Roombas, reviewed Shark, I've also done LG, and some other brands. But the S6 is definitely takes the cake. So one thing that the M7 has over the Roblox series is the ability to not include obstacles within its map. This is a pro and cause. One pro about not having obstacles is if you close the door, the robot will not remember the door being closed and it will try to check out the area, whereas the Roblox will actually remember that and won't attempt to check the area if the door gets reopened. I think that's a handy feature, but as you can see that the M7 is having trouble with the obstacles because it didn't remember those obstacles, so it has to basically relearn how to navigate around those obstacles. I would say that both well, vacuums did fairly well in this challenge. They can navigate obstacles fairly well with their LiDAR navigation, and LiDAR tends to be the best at recognizing objects. These are the few robot vacuums that can recognize an object and not bump into them, and also they can navigate in complete darkness. So if you're looking for a robot where you can run at night, I think these are great options. 
Another feature that both robot vacuums have besides being able to physically move them within a floor plan is you can move the charging location. So if you find that the charger is not in an ideal location, go ahead and move the charger to a new location. As long as it's within the same floor plan, the robot can update its charging location. So our next head-to-head -head challenge, we're actually going to do a variety of material, powder, chips, and different things. So we're going to use about 0.43 ounces on the fun dip. Also, we're going to put about 0.4 ounces of beads. And this bag of chips is around 0.63 ounces. So if we add all that up, so it's about one and a half ounces of material, which I think is a lot for just doing maintenance cleaning. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, fill in the beads and measure out 0.4 ounces of plastic beads. Next, we're going to also weigh out the dust bins, the dry weights. So for the Roblox S5 Max, the robot I'm going to use for this testing, we're looking at 5.935 ounces. And for the M7 Pro, the dust bins is around 10.51 ounces. Now, keep in mind that the M7 Pro has 600 milliliters to work with. So for this cleanup challenge, I'm going to put a slick bathroom rug. So the robot has to figure out how to get onto the bathroom rug without pushing around too much. Also, I'll have a chair leg, so we'll see how well it deals with obstacles. The Roblox starts with a perimeter sweep, and then it will perform a back and forth clean pattern. That's really well incorporating the object. It did struggle on the bathroom rugs, and you can see that it left quite a bit of debris on the initial run. But I'll do a second run and see how much better it can pick it up. I tell people that these well, vacuums are maintenance cleaners. Yes, they cannot compete with the upright vacuum that can plug in the wall because they have higher suction and more power. But if these guys That's run around two or three times on your house each week, they will keep down the dust and pollen and all the dirt on your floors. And I have found that these well, vacuums can run multiple times during the day and they do a good job cleaning. So it's advised to run them two or three That's times if you don't like itself. the performance the first time around. This is a challenging test for both robots and you can see that the robot moved the bathroom rug around quite a bit so I advise you to pick up your bathroom rugs if you want to run these robot vacuums give them the best chance to pick up the most debris and you can't go wrong with both robots you can just keep running them over and over until you feel satisfactory at the pickup ability okay let's see how well the Roblox did on its second run keep in mind I did one and a half ounces of debris and also the fact that the bathroom oh. rug was moving around so the robot didn't get on the bathroom rug as much as it should. So if you like these types of videos, please smash the like button. Helps me gauge if this video is popular. Also, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Nathan. This is Robot Masters. I do a lot of head-to-head -head challenges. I do unboxings, reviews. Also, I try to portray the real world as much as possible in a real-life test of my own house. So it looks like the Roblox did 80% out of the two cleaning runs. So it's not too bad. I'm going to show you how much debris is in a dustbin. Again, this is around 400 milliliter dustbin and it was pretty much full. Just to prevent any excessive debris, I went ahead and uh, vacuumed up the area with my shark stick. I really like this vacuum. Alright, so the M7 does the same cleaning pattern as the Roborock where it does a perimeter sweep. Then it does a back and forth cleaning pattern and once it detects an obstacle, it will try to do a perimeter sweep around that obstacle. Very similar to what the Roborock does. I do apologize for the glare in the camera. I guess when you film in the morning, sunlight starts shining through my window. But hopefully someday I'll get a filter for my lens. Okay, let's see how well the M7 did. Now keep in mind, it's the same amount of material at 1.5 ounces. And we'll also zero out the scale so it makes sure that it has the most accurate reading. Now do you notice the scattered debris? That's one thing I noticed about the M7 is the dual side brush is nice, but they spin too quickly out in the open area. So there's some scattered debris that actually shot near my camera. So in the first initial pickup, it was at 77%. I was actually quite impressed. I had to rerun the numbers just to make sure my math wasn't off. Both the Roblox and M7 can start a new cleaning job anywhere within the floor plan. So that's a nice touch. All you have to do within the app is just draw out a new area and the robot will actually determine where it's at and go to that area. So in the future, I would like to see the M7 to get a software update to have the side brushes spin slower. I think that's the only downside to this robot is the side brushes. They kind of do more harm than good. Okay, so it looks like the M7 is almost done. So hold on a second. I'm also going to do a mopping challenge and see how much dirt these 
robot vacuums can mop up. Now keep in mind that the mopping feature on both the Roblox and M7 are designed for light mopping duties. They're really not designed for the hard stains. You probably have to get a manual mop or maybe the Bravo Jet M6 could get those more stubborn stains. So I really like the M7, it offers a lot of features, but here's one of the sore points of the M7 is the self-emptying bin. While it's a neat design, there's a lot of flaws to it, especially when trying to extract larger debris, kind of like cereal. Also, I tried Skittles and it really does struggle. It's not as good as like the Roomba i7 or S9 self-emptying bin, so maybe in the future they can improve it off of a secondary model, but I'm going to demonstrate how much debris can get removed from the robot. Okay, let's see how much content was extracted from the bin. It sounded like there was a lot of material being removed. Now this is about one and a half material in the dustbin and it looks like about half the material was removed. I would run it a second time to see if it removed more, but in reality I had to run it maybe three to five times to get all the material out of the dustbin. I'm going to do some additional testing with the self-emptying bin and just have it run maybe two or three weeks in my household and see how well the dustbin keeps clean. Okay, so this is the second emptying and we'll see how much debris is in there. Yeah, it looks like it emptied out a little bit more, but still there's some material in there. Okay, so last thing I want to show in this video is the mopping performance of both robots. I'm comparing this to the Roborock S6 because the mopping mechanics is gravity fed like on the M7. Both robots provide the option to do either washable mopping pads or you can do disposable mopping pads as well. On the M7, the water reservoir is quite small at 110 milliliters, but you notice the water droplets. Also, you get a few in the box. You also have some Velcro strips to hold on the mopping pad, and you got that rear wheel to help provide support for the robot. I do like the fact that both robots have instructions to show you how to quickly start the mopping system. It's fairly simple. Fill up with water, slap on the mopping pad, and then slide it underneath the robot. Basically, the S6 is a larger version of the M7, minus having that mechanical switch on the S6, which is nice so you can control the water flow. Also, it comes with a plastic kind of holder, so it prevents water from going onto your hardwood floors as the robot charges. So let's start with the M7 Pro. It's very unique that when you enable the Y pattern, it actually divides the room up in half and performs a Y pattern for the mopping. Now, one thing to note is both these mopping Robots or hybrids are designed for light mopping duty, so don't expect them to get off heavy dirt and grime, but the Y pattern does help. It does spend a little bit extra time concentrating on the areas. Me personally, I probably won't use the mopping, especially like ones that can control the electronic water. The reason behind this is my floors are very delicate, especially since the hardwood floors, and I believe this is too much water, and unfortunately, I can't control the water setting. So if you have delicate floors, I would highly recommend getting like an electronically controlled water system. Both the Procenic and Roblox offers a model. On the Procenic, you can get the M7, the regular version, which has an electronic mopping pad, or you can get the Roblox S5 for the Roblox. So the M6 is a little bit different while it does a complete perimeter sweep around the entire area then it just does a normal back and forth clean pattern very similar to if it was just vacuuming. Now one thing I forgot to mention is both the robots will have their vacuum motors on so you can directly vacuum and mop at the same time. In the mopping mode of both robots, you can change the vacuum power levels. Now if you had a liquid spill, I do not recommend trying to mop them up with these robots because the liquid can directly get inside the robot and cause permanent damage to the electronics. Okay, so it looks like the Roblox almost done. We're going to just do a quick look at how much dirt both the robots picked up. I hope you have a great rest of the day and you like this video. I'll see you guys next time. I think my next video is going to be a more in-depth review of the M7.